This is Dr. Weich Coleman dictating on cataract surgery basics. This is video one of six on incisions. So basically I got 10 videos from a random surgery day. These are all standard non-laser cases. Cut out only the incisions, the paracentesis in the main to give you a series of 10 just focusing on one part and we'll break them up into the seven steps of cataract surgery. I'm going to talk to you this not in the particular order it's happening on the screen. You can go back and watch that on your own but one step at a time as it occurs. So the first step is the paracentesis. Number one, I stabilize the eye with 0.12s. They're nice because you can always grasp the conge of the limbus if you need to. I use a 15 degree blade that's a little bit more versatile than MVR to me because you can make an incision slightly wider if you need to. I like about one millimeter, but you can always go a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller for things like iris hooks. So whenever you're using the 15 degree knife, it's important not to have it rotated. You want it real flat as it goes into the iris about iris plane rotationally and in the Z axis. So I look at the base of the blade where the blade hooks to the plastic to see if I have it rotated. It's the best way to see it because if you focus on the tip, which is typically where you're looking when you're inserting it into the cornea, you can't really tell if there's rotation present. So I go about one half to two thirds of the way in. That's a, about a one millimeter wound, maybe slightly more. Come straight out. We're using sugarcane on every case. Our argument there is that if you get a better dilated pupil, you'll need myostat a lot less at the time. And the only argument that we can find against sugarcane in every case is that myostat doesn't work too good. But as long as you use it a lot less and you have good pupil dilation, I think it's a good trade-off. So after the paracentesis is made, lidocaine's injected, followed by viscoelastic. I want to make sure that cannula tips all the way in the eye. We don't want to uh, dissect off corneal endothelium with lidocaine or especially viscoelastic will come all the way across the eye. That way if we have bubbles, we'll be burping them back out the paracentesis, get the eye fairly firm. And I'm gonna stabilize with my point one two is I believe one of these cases, the patient is, is belzing, is not cooperative and fixating. And in that case, I can just grab the conjunctiva at the limbus. And so I don't have to uh, change instruments in order to be able to uh, complete my wound. If you were using a Connor or second instrument through the paracentesis, you'd have to switch to something if you wanted to grasp the conge. And I also don't like torque 90 degrees away from where you're making the incisions. For me, in a comfort level, it's optimal to make the incisions 90 degrees apart. It also helps me mechanically to have an advantage to crack and divide and conquer the nucleus, which you'll see the technique on that in the next video, or maybe two videos away. So this was a small pupil, and I injected the viscoelastic more centrally to try to give some more pupil dilation. I noticed that after the fact, that's sort of a subtle technique that I'm just learning by watching my own videos that I think I do subconsciously. Now I do puncture the capsule with the microkeratome. That's a 2.4 single bevel uh, microkeratome by Alcon. If you have a blade that has bevels on the side edge of it, that's not safe to do. I think it's important to note that for paracentesis wounds, you always want the bevel facing superior towards the top of the patient's head. That way, if they have a Bell's reflex, you don't make a large several clock hour incision in the cornea. So you'll see in these videos, you'll have alternating bevel facing up, bevel, or bevel facing right, bevel facing left. That's just a function of which eye we're in. So if we're in the left eye, the bevel's going to face right. And if we're on the left eye, the bevel's going to face left. And um, that's to keep it always facing superior towards the top of the patient's head. Now I make a two-step main incision. I used to make a three-step, but I think a two-step is adequate, so I'm basically going cornea plane, then iris plane, and pushing down slightly as I enter into the eye, so I'm controlling the length of the incision. A paracentesis incision basically should be iris plane, flat. You see I'm grasping the conge here. I've got the point one twos ready to go, so I don't have to change instruments to do it. This somewhat uncooperative patient, you saw the light go out and light go back on. Sometimes when people can't fixate on the light, you can turn it off, then turn it back on, and that'll help them find it and fixate. In this case, it's not helping much, and we're just going to have to suffer through this one. Um, I think the patient gets a little more sedation and does better. Okay, we got lidocaine followed by viscoelastic. I think it's important to note the location of the wounds. Where you're starting the wounds, they should be about 0.5 millimeters into clear cornea. I think that's the ideal place to start. So if you get too anterior, that's really a problem with the main wound, even more so than the paracentesis. 
So I'm going to start about a half a millimeter into clear cornea for both of the incisions. You'll see I'm pretty consistent in this location and the depth and basically the whole technique seems to be pretty consistent from patient to patient even with different levels of patient cooperation. Now on your main incision, if you make it too far anterior, it'll torture you the whole case and it could get close to the visual axis. You don't want it to be anterior because it's uh, initiated too anterior or because it's too long. And I think about a 2.5 millimeter length is about right. So you'll see the length here. There is a mark on this blade. I like the 2.4 keratome because it gives you a guide on when you should go ahead and penetrate into the anterior chamber. If you make it too posterior, it will track back into the conjunctiva. It's important not to push down as you're initially making your cut. You can push down to enter the anterior chamber, but do not push down as you initiate the wound because that will cause the edges of the blade to track posteriorly into the conjunctiva. You can get conjunctiva bubbling um, from BSS getting trapped underneath it, and that can cause a heck of a problem for your view and some discomfort for the patient afterwards. Get the eye fairly firm. I've seen people use many methods to stabilize the eye. Fingers, Connors, and the paracentesis wound. You know, every time I try something new, I end up back with my point one twos. I like less instruments in my set. I like less passing of instruments, and that helps me to be uh, pretty versatile and do whatever I need to do. So we'll talk through these last few. Half a millimeter anterior. Bell will not rotate it. One half to two thirds the way in. I'm going to get the cannula tip all the way into the anterior chamber before I start a major injection. You can inject a little bit, but you want to make sure that you're in so you don't dissect away endothelium. A little pain with the lidocaine, be ready for that movement. I'm injecting a little viscoelastic. I guess that was a little another dab of lidocaine to make sure we've got it good and numb. Sugarcane, I should say, I misspoke there. Okay, here comes the viscoelastic. We're going to inject a little bit and then come all the way across the eye and bring the fluid weight back towards the paracentesis. And that way, if we have any bubbles, they burp right out of the eye and they don't obstruct our view when we move on to the next step, which is the capsorexis. 90 degrees apart on the wounds again. And I'm going to start a half a millimeter anterior, about 2.5 millimeters in length. Puncture the anterior capsule. That puncture is going to be our starting point for our capsorexis. I really like that technique. We'll talk about it more in the next video. So I hope this series helps everybody. I like to break it down for those interested in time and efficiency, the incision portion. Uh, if you take this 8 minute and 17 second video divided by 10, that's 48 seconds on average to complete a paracentesis, inject sugarcane, inject viscoelastic, and complete a main wound and puncture the anterior capsule. And that just gives me a starting point and rather than having to drag a somewhat blunt instrument uh, across the surface of the capsule, I can go ahead and just go in with my tips closed together on Utrata's lift up and begin the capsorexis. Okay, be sure and watch the next one, and thanks for watching this one.